this thing by yourself. Amen. You're not in this by yourself. You're not alone. Come on, tell somebody like you mean it. You're not alone. Maybe you forgot the hard times that you had and you felt that you was by yourself. You felt like nobody was checking on you, that people had forgotten about you. Somebody needs to know in this house today that you are not alone. You don't have to fight by yourself. You don't have to stand by yourself. You don't have to figure it out by yourself.
better than what it usually is because I need for them to die a horrible, miserable death. I need everybody to know that they had to be um, the example. If you don't bow down, this is what's going to happen yes. to you. Amen. The scripture goes on to tell us that they bound them. They was in their clothes, their garments. They, they bound their hands. They bound their feet. They, they left the hats on. They left all their clothes on them. And the soldiers that threw them in was burned up immediately, but the boys didn't die. Amen. We're here, here we are at verse 24. It says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen. Verse 26, then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fires and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, mm -hmm. come out and come here. Yeah. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together. And they saw these men on whose body the fire had no power. Say, had no power. Had, had no power. power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him. And, and they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their house shall be made an ash heap because there is no other god who can deliver like this. There is no other God who can deliver like this. Carmen, I need you to get with me. Put the baby down. There is no other God who can deliver like this. Amen? Amen. The first thing I noticed when I was reading this was it was an unbeliever that noticed that the Hebrew boys was not alone. Sometimes you're waiting on the pastor, the prophet, the preacher to call you out and tell you that God is with you. But this was a man that didn't even believe in the power of God. As a matter of fact, he said, who can from my hands. It was an unbeliever. The signs are for the unbeliever. It'll be the very ones that didn't like you. Your very haters that we call them. That'll tell you, girl, I know it was God that did that for you in your life. Amen? It was the unbeliever that noticed it. Who is the fourth man? Who is the fourth man? I want you to think about that. Who is the fourth man? The other person that was in the fire, walking with them, comforting them. The very fire that had killed the soldiers. The one that had power over the fire. John 1, 1 and 2 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God. The Holy Spirit, the Son of God. John 8 and 58 said, Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. I am was the fourth man. Revelation 1 and 18 said, I am here, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and death. The fourth man is the one that has the power over the grave. Amen. The fourth man in the fire. John 14 and 26 says he is the helper. Amen. Amen. The fourth man is the helper. First John 5 and 6, 6 calls him the truth. Romans 8 and 11 says he has resurrection power. The fourth man was the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead. Yeah, amen. Amen. Romans 8, 16, the fourth man is he who testifies on our behalf that we are the children of God. Yeah. The fourth man, according to 8, 20, Romans 8 and 26, says he helps our weaknesses and he intercedes for us. The fourth man, according to Isaiah 63 and 10 and Ephesians 4 and 30, says he can be grieved. The fourth man loves, he has a mind, he speaks, he knows the thoughts of man, he teaches, and he leads. Amen. The fourth man is the Holy Spirit, the very power that lives on the inside of every believer. The fourth man, the man that was walking around in the fire, the one who can make fire be still, the one who allowed them to be able to breathe when the fire was supposed to have sucked up all the oxygen. That same fourth man resides on the inside of every believer in this house. Every believer in this house. I want you to imagine the power that's lying dormant in these four walls. The fourth man. The fire had no power. Mm -hmm. It burned up the ones that threw them in. It even burned the cords off their hands and burned the cords off their feet, but it didn't touch them. Amen. 
Everything that the enemy tried to use to tie them down, the consuming fire, the fourth man removed it. And according to Isaiah 43 and 2, the word of God says, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. They will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you won't be burned. The flames will not set a blaze to you. So whatever it is that you're going through, whatever problem that you're in the midst of, when you come out of this day, Marvin Sapp had it right when he said, I don't look like what I've been through. Amen? Amen. Sometimes people don't think that you can tell them anything because you don't look broken. You don't look like you've been through anything. But when you operate in the favor of God and when you trust God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, you should be able to go through something and withstand something and come out and don't look like what it was you went through. Don't smell like it. Don't talk like it. Don't act like it. Because you have the DNA of your father on the inside of you. The only thing we should be representing is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? Any other residue that's not like God will be burned off in the fire. Anything that the enemy put on In the name of Jesus. Maybe you don't believe me. The power of the fourth man. Amen. But if you look at 1 Kings 18 and 36. Elijah was on Mount Carmel. And he was at a showdown. And he said, Lord, let it be known this day that, that you are God and I am your servant. And when he declared the word, it says that the fire failed. Amen. What the, what the other prophets had been doing all day and into the night trying to get their gods to do, God did it at the word of his prophet. Amen. The fourth man showed up. Acts 3 and 4, Peter and John were headed to the temple. It was another example of when the fourth man showed up. In Acts third chapter and the fourth chapter, Peter and John was headed to the temple. And a man was lame from his mother's womb for over 40 years. He sat at the gate begging. The scripture said that every day somebody would pick him up and take him to the gate and drop him off. And every afternoon somebody would go back to the gate and pick him up and take him back home. He had been lame from the time he was born for over 40 years. Peter said he was begging to Peter and John. He looked at them and the scripture said that he looked at them because he expected something from them. Peter said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have I give to you. He said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. He reached out his hand. He grabbed the man by the hand, and the man got up and said that he was leaping. He was dancing. He was shouting. And he followed Peter and John into the temple. He went into the temple walking, leaping, and praising God. Why? Because the fourth man, the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter and John, was telling the people, when, when the man came in praising God, they, they immediately knew who it was because they had passed him for 40 years. My question was, why nobody ever took him on into the church? <laughs> that's right, that's right. They took him to the gate. Mm -hmm. All the church folk was passing him and going into the temple every day. That's right. But he, when he got his healing, he went into the house of God rejoicing. Let me tell you something. When the power of God moves in your life and you really know who the fourth man is, when God show up on your behalf, don't nobody have to tell you to dance. Don't nobody have to tell you to praise God. Nobody have to tell you to lift your hands.
the whole the the hotel shook the uh, prison and the doors came open. This was the incident where he he woke him up. He told him to get himself together and he said he led him out past the guard, past the second guard, out of the city to the city gates. It was when he got to the city gate that and the, and the angel disappeared that Peter realized, wait a minute, I ain't in jail no more. Wait a minute, I ain't bound no more. Sometimes when you're going about doing what God has told you to do, and you serving and you giving it all you got. You'll take the job that you didn't want. You'll put up with people that don't even like you. Because you are a person of integrity. It's going to come a time and you're going to look up and you're going to be like, wait a minute, I ain't even in that no more. Right, I ain't even bound no more. Wait a minute, they, they was talking about me last year and I was ready to fight, but this that don't even bother me no more. Right, you'll look up and you'll look back and you'll see that you've come so much further than you thought you did when you was in the midst of it. Yeah. But what I found interesting about this story with Peter was he arrived at the house and Rhoda heard him on the other side of the door when he knocked on the door when he was telling her to let me in. She recognized his voice, ran back in the house where the saints had been praying all day, late into the night, telling Peter at the door, girl, Peter ain't at no door. And they gonna keep on praying. Peter is at the door. Peter ain't at that door. You must, something going on, y'all check on Rhoda because Peter ain't at no door. But Peter is in the prison. But you praying for God to release it. Yeah. It got, must be, the scripture said, it said it must be Peter's spirit at the door. No, Peter, the girl was so excited that Peter was at the door that she never opened the door and let Peter in. He's still at the door knocking. You need to go read this for yourself. Ask yeah. the question. He was still at the door knocking and they ended up fussing that Peter ain't at the door. So when he fight, they finally let Peter in, the scripture said the saints were astonished. For the intercessors, remember we said tag you in earlier. When you pray for somebody, That's right. expect That's them right. to be delivered. Yeah. Yeah. Don't pray for rain if you don't bring the umbrella. <laughs> if I pray for rain, we're going to bring the umbrella because we expecting it to rain. Yeah. Amen. 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 Why was the saints astonished that God, the fourth man, had showed up? That's what they was praying for. Amen. We got to have the kind of faith like the Hebrew boys have that we expect. God to show up every time. Amen. Now I might catch you, I might catch you a little off guard on how he do it. But I expect him to do it. Tell somebody I expect God to do it. I expect him to do it. Luke 21, 10 through 19. I'm almost done. Says you will be persecuted and brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Verse 13 said it, but it will turn out for you an occasion for testimony. Amen. I want you to hear me. Say, you're going to be persecuted. For my name's sake. You may even have to stand trial for my name's sake. He said, but for you, it's going to turn out for a t uh, an occasion for testimony. Uh, verse 18 says, not a hair on your head will be lost. In that same passage, it says, don't even worry about what you should say. God says, I'm going to put a word in your mouth that the enemy won't even be able to gainsay nor resist. They won't even be able to contradict what I'm getting ready to put in your mouth. All you got to do is trust me. All you got to do is trust me. When the fourth man shows up, when the spirit of God has, has a free course to reign and rule in your life, you don't have to worry about somebody trying to set you up and trap you up. Amen? Because the spirit of God says he'll put the words in your mouth that you ought to say. And the enemy won't be able to even stand against it. When we have a steadfast faith in God, it will produce a steadfast faithfulness to God. Mm -hmm. A steadfast faith in God produces a steadfast faithfulness to God. Step one is you got to trust God. You got to have faith.